Thanks for listening to the Lakers Fast Break Podcast, part of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Check out all their awesome basketball shows today at hoopheadspod.com. Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Pop Culture Cosmos. The Lakers Fast Break. Inside Sports Fantasy Football and Game Source, we truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. And also, Lakerholics.com. And also, hoopsheadpod.com, home of the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. It is sincerely appreciated. Well, everything going into it was setting itself up for some great success tonight. Andre Drummond was joining the team, being inserted into the starting lineup. Things were looking so good. And then my daughter called me while I was on the road and told me, something that I didn't want to really hear too much because I knew it sent some ominous signs. And this is ominous sign number one is that she called me and told me in the game beforehand, I think it was uh, Boston and Dallas and they were playing ESPN was promoing the game with Giannis Antetokounmpo versus Dennis Schroeder. So she goes, dad, it's Giannis versus Dennis Schroeder. It just doesn't have the same feel, Dad. Yeah, I know, honey, but really, they're just trying to find who right now, who's Dad, Schroeder. Okay, honey, but I just, I want to tell you, they could have gotten Kuzma, Dad, Schroeder, Schroeder. I get it. I get it. So, all right, that's that kind of a little bit ominous, ominous tone, but the Lakers did get off to a great start. They hit eight... Uh, Three-pointers real early. I was thinking Laker Tom was already happy because they had outscored them in by the in the three-point area by quite a bit in the first quarter. And then the second ominous thing happened. My mom called me. My 87-year-old mom she called me on the phone. She said the magic words you don't want to hear during the course of the game. Gerald, the Lakers are playing great. I knew then that was the kiss of death. I love you, Mom. You're awesome, but whenever someone calls you on the phone that tells you a certain team's playing great, you know it's all downhill from there. And that's pretty much what it was for the Lakers and also Andre Drummond's debut after a kind of promising start, some great activity on his part. He unfortunately suffered a toe injury and didn't play, but I think 14 minutes in the game as total, only four points, one rebound. Two assists, two of six. It's just incomplete performance because he suffered the toe injury, but it was also an incomplete performance as well for the Los Angeles Lakers as they fell 112 to 97. Again, just so hungry for offense. There's no way we seem to be able to create it at times. It just is truly troubling to see. But here to analyze the game today and Andre Drummond's performance, albeit short, whatever it was. Is a good man indeed. You got to be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. It is the mastermind of that awesome site, plus also his own site on medium.com. It is Laker Tom. And Laker Tom, unfortunately, uh, in Andre Drummond's debut, we saw a whole lot of Marcus All. You know, I had one of those uh, moments too, just like you did, Gerald. My wife came by, watched the game for a few minutes, and said, I'm going to bed. The Lakers are toast. <laughs> so when Mrs. Laker Tom says that, uh, it's not a good sign. This was, uh, you know, and, and to be honest, this was a tough game for the Lakers, and it's a tough matchup for for Andre Drummond to go in that first game. And obviously, I think what we saw, what we saw is exactly the things that people had been worried about. It started off, Drummond made a, a nice block at one end, 
and then blew an easy dunk at the other end on a lob. The point being that Dre is not a great finisher at the rim. Uh, Then he took another shot that was not a good shot, got that shot blocked. Then he made a nice steal at the other end, tipping the ball away from a guy. Missed a couple of free throws, showing another one of the weak areas of his game. Made some good passes, had two assists in the first uh, quarter. And the Lakers were red hot, hitting 8 out of 12. The rest of the game, they shot 2 out of 24, which is right in line with always, which has always been my major concern about the Lakers offensively, that they are going to lose the three-point battle against almost every one of the top teams that they're likely to face in the playoffs. And that's not a good measure of how you take advantage of either Anthony Davis or LeBron James. Um, You surround them with three-point shooters, and uh, we don't have three-point shooters. Contavious Caldwell-Pope continued his campaign to refuse to take a three-point shot because he doesn't want to lower his his once lofty three-point shooting percentage. And so he's defending that by refusing to take a shot, refusing to get open, and and basically, you know, being a non-factor as a starter on a defending championship team. Alex Caruso, in a campaign just to prove that all of these people that made him the bench goat were total fools, had another horrible game, silly fouls, turnovers, and so forth. And then Dennis Schroeder, who announced that he was going to reduce his turnovers because he thought that was a major problem with his game, proceeded to to even make one of the stupidest turnovers I've ever seen, standing right underneath his own basket and and letting a guy steal the ball for an easy layup right there without even having to move. The Lakers were lackluster on defense. They got off to a good start, and then that was all it wrote for the rest of the game. This team just does not have the character to win games against superior teams. They could find if they're playing the Orlando Magic or they're playing the Detroit Pistons or somebody of that ilk, but put them up against any good team and they really are a pretty sad collection of players without LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I was very disappointed in the game. I was disappointed in... The effort by all of the players, I was disappointed in the debut of Andre Drummond, although I have to admit that that was a tough challenge for him to go up against Andre Tocompo. Of course, the other center on on their team, too, sort of gave him a few lessons and blocked a couple of his shots, dunked on him a couple of times. So, Are you talking about Lopez? Yeah, right. Who we had? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, at least he didn't kill us with nailing about 10 threes, but he, he was unstoppable underneath. You know, the Giannis wasn't impressive, but he made all of his free throws tonight. I don't think he missed a single free throw, made his only three-pointer, and it was like playing with children, basically. And then the announcers, ESPN, aside from their technical difficulties and losing Mark Jones for half of the game and then and then Mark Jackson basically with a bunch of ludicrous comments. And there were several plays that I wondered what happened because the announcers never even explained what happened on the plays. And this seemed like a constant thing that was happening during the game. Uh, They went off on a long dialogue about uh, Elgin Baylor and hey, great to do that in moments when things aren't happening in the court. But uh, it was a, you know, it's kind of funny. I spent the entire day trying to straighten out my, Xfinity account so that I could watch the game. (laughs) Uh, I'd had like three or four different calls with Xfinity trying to redo my bundle of, of various uh, packages for the internet and so forth. And uh, it it was just by pure sheer luck that I was able to finally get it working before the game started. But are are you sure it was good luck? Because you know, the the result (laughs) came in hand. Well, it was good luck because last night I, I they, I'd actually canceled uh, TBS, and I and unfortunately I didn't realize that the UCLA game was being broadcast on TBS. Whoops! Uh, so I was able to watch that game uh, because of their screw ups. But at any rate, uh, Co Bruins, Lakers are going to have a hard time staying out of the play-in tournament. At this point in time, I think that they're 
going to be a serious candidate for it. The only thing that can prevent that really, it's not, we're not going to, you know, Android, Dumb, Andre Dumman may come in and have a, have an impact against certain teams. This was not a good matchup for him, but you know, he's, he's not a great threat. He's not the dunk threat. Let's say that Dwight Howard was, or that JaVale McGee, he's not the shot blocker that Dwight Howard or JaVale McGee was. I had hoped that he would, uh, show some quickness of foot and quickness of hands to be able to defend on the perimeter, but I didn't see any of that today. Um, I did see at least a sort of willingness to pass the ball to uh, rather than to go and take shots underneath. Uh, um, he obviously does not have a great repertoire of low post moves to score, but you know, let's, let's see what happens as we go on. It is just one game and it was a bad matchup. And we'll see what happens as we move on to the schedule. But, you know, we've got the Kings on Friday and we've got the Clippers on Sunday. And it doesn't get any easier after that. For every every possible win, we've got a sure loss following it over the next week and a half. It's going to be a tough hole and uh, the Lakers are going to to really have to struggle. And what worries me more than anything else is, uh, is the things that I thought were good points that the two marks brought up during their discussions, which is teams that get into bad habits and can't pull themselves together when they don't have their superstars. Usually that's something that doesn't get solved immediately just because LeBron James and Anthony Davis come back into the lineup. This whole concept of next man up is something that you hear talked about by teams that are in situations like the Lakers find themselves where players play better than they normally do. Players take on more responsibility than they normally have. And they perform at a higher level than they normally do because they're the next man up. The Lakers don't have anybody playing like the next man up. This is Raphael from NBADraftJunkies.com, and you are listening to the Lakers Fast Break. Hey, hoop heads, we all hate ankle sprains, and they happen way too often. Ankle injuries are the number one sports-related injury. Arise is trying to change that. With the iFast, your athletes get preventative protection and full mobility. Athletes no longer need to wear bulky braces that limit performance and give mediocre protection. Anyone playing sports should be using these products. Keep your athletes in the game. Don't wait for them to get hurt to take action. Visit www.arise.com, spelled A-R-Y-S-E, and use the code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off the future of performance. That's A-R-Y-S-E dot com with promo code HOOPHEADS to get 20% off. Once again, it is the Lakers Fast Break. Thank you so much to Albert for the thumbs up. And we truly appreciate everyone everywhere, whether it's the Philippines or all over, checking us out. This is, again, the Lakers fast break. The Lakers, unfortunately, did lose in Andre Drummond's debut, 112 to 97. Do you hear any of the extent of uh, Andre's toe injury? Because, again, he only played 14 minutes, obviously got those uneven returns. But he did, ex- he did x-rays and there's just nothing wrong with the foot other than apparently he tore off his toenail. Okay. That's a painful it's thing. It's kind of hard to do when you're wearing sneakers. I don't know if you've ever checked out like LeBron's feet and and realized I've actually because I, I know this firsthand because they had uh, taken pictures of him on the beach during that two week sabbatical he sabbatical he took off mm-hmm. when he was playing for the Heat and it showed that his toes and his feet and I know you can't see this on radio but everybody that's watching on 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 Facebook right now. This is how his toes were when they showed a close-up of his feet. His toes were basically overlapping on top of each other. And I only can assume, and this is what other basketball players have said over the course of of many years, is that because your feet are stepped on so many times in Mm. so many different ways, in so many different angles, that they they don't even bother fixing the toes until their end of their, you know, by the time they're, you know, they wait until they retire before they go ahead and fix them. So, I'm not surprised his nail got got ripped off because if you hit it at the right angle, at the right shoe, things like that yeah, can happen. Just so. yeah, I mean, you played the you played the game. I played the game. 
I played for many years and I've had feet that were messed up. I mean, my toes are just all messed up. That's another story altogether. That's because they're just size 14s and they're big and they get everywhere. But you you know, that's what happens when you're, you're underneath. I don't know. I've, I've never had problems with my toes. I've always said I, my problem's always been ankle sprains, high ankle sprains ah. one after, and Achilles tendon tears. Oh, that's not good. That's a double no, no, but yeah, I tore my left when I was 30 and my right when I was 40. Playing there goes basketball, your playing there playing goes. basketball with the same group of guys. They probably just laughed at you. Hey, come on, get up, Tom. Get up. Fast break. Well, I accused I accused both times I accused somebody of kicking me in the back of the leg, tripping <laughs> me and so forth. And uh because that's what it feels like when your Achilles goes, you know, it's like exactly like a window shade all of a sudden just zipping up and uh you swear somebody tripped you on that fast break or on that rebound. You got kicked in the back of the leg. When you actually didn't. So no, it's, no. Uh, that's that's the bad this part. After about the it. doctor promised me after the first one that don't worry, you won't be able to jump high enough to tear the other one. Uh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see how that went. But again, it is one twelve to ninety seven. Hopefully he will return in full so we can get a better look at Andre Drummond playing within the confines of the Lakers offense and defense on Friday against Sacramento. Rashawn Holmes is no slouch now. He's playing very well. There's a hot team going there. They've won seven out of the last ten, so please do not snooze on the Kings when they go up to Sacramento. Saw what happened. They couldn't They couldn't finish the job, even though they played very well just before the All-Star break against Sacramento. So we'll see what happens there. But, again, when it comes down to it, just not able to generate enough offense. Wesley Matthews, I, I – he was putting up shots, you know, give him credit, but still not able to go ahead and, and get enough for you out there. I mean, Montrez Harrell, 6 of 11, you saw the diminished returns as far as it's concerned because he didn't play as much as I thought he should have. I thought he should have at least been in there at least five more minutes, given 30 minutes. He could have gotten a little bit more into that, but, you know, 19 points for him as far as leading it. Kuzma is the one I was really sad for because he had he got up to such a hot start and out, like the rest of the team, after the first quarter, it was just horrible news for him. One out of nine for the three-point area, seven out of 17 overall, 16 points. I mean, Dennis Schroeder, I know you were talking about the assist-to-turnover ratio. Today was eight assists and three turnovers, which is on the surface and then the box score pretty good. But unfortunately, the results didn't materialize. Yeah, six of 18 from the floor Yeah, it was not great shooting. No, no, it's not. I mean, three of eight from three. I mean, that's we'll take that. That in fact, that's the best on the team for today. So, Marcus Saul came in, wasn't much of a use as far as that either. I mean, if he's upset about being benched in the favor of Andre Drummond, he sure didn't play like it because we only scored two points for us. Just basically, right now, I'm very. You know who I'm really kind of disappointed in? Tht. I understand he's twenty. It was a terrible game by Talon. But he's played a series of games in a row where it's just not materializing. I'm expecting. I told this to you or on a previous all of them, all of those games right after the uh, right after not being traded. Yeah, and you would have thought that that's the time when you come out and really, really shine. You know, where you yeah. come out with your great confidence. But you know, I he's still only 20 years old. Teams now understand what his big strengths are. But the problem is, is that he's He's out of control. He's losing control of the ball. He's turning it over. Uh, he's making dumb plays by trying too hard, not playing within the confines of the offense. You know, it's, and that's, I think, of everything that really disappoints me about this Lakers team so far. And who knows what will happen, you know, when you get LeBron and AD back, things may change around. But we really haven't seen the next man up phenomenon at all. You know, and and you look at the players that we really expected to be able to carry the team because LeBron out would have been the three guys who were at least at various points in times having the role of being the playmakers. And that's Alex Caruso, Taylor Horton Tucker, and uh, Dennis Schroeder. And yet all three of them have, they have shown their warts, if you will, and have basically not been able to just improve on their strengths and minimize their weaknesses. Instead, mm-hmm. they've almost all three flipped it around where they're showing their weaknesses. 
Talon has not been able to even get to the basket for any of those moves that he's been making earlier. And instead he's losing the ball in traffic because he's choosing the wrong times to attack. Caruso seems to have lost his confidence completely in his shot and his ability to make a big play. And he's made several stupid turnovers. Um, And then Schroeder just, it's one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back, you know, he'll make a great play and then a boner play, you know, and it's, uh, and when you have your three best playmakers like that, doing that all game long, it becomes a very ragged affair and you don't put together any streak of three or four or five plays going well together. Other than that hot start where we were eight of 12 from three and then finishing, but by going two for 24, it's a dispirited team at this point in time. They had hoped that uh, Andre would come in and really give him a spark. Um, and let's hope that maybe he can get himself going against the Kings. He'll be a better matchup against Rashawn Holmes than, uh, than obviously going against Giannis and Brook Lopez, but things don't look good for the Lakers because now I mean, what are we, I think we're still just fortunately two games out of the seventh spot right now. Well, let's go ahead. And, and uh, I, right now I'm going to go ahead and say, once again, it's the Lakers fast break. I want to go ahead and thanks everybody for listening and watching, but yes, let me give everybody a rundown right now. We are 30 and 18 right now is our record. We're still in fourth place as of this point in time, but a half game only in front of Denver and Portland. And both those teams are fighting it out. Both those teams have healthy rosters. In fact, Portland has just got a lot of their guys back. And they're both primed to go ahead and pass the Lakers. So by the weekend, we could be down to sixth place. And just in front of Dallas, which will be about three and a half. Right now, they're three and a half games in front of Dallas. And that would be by the time maybe AD gets back, that could be wiped out as well. So we could realistically be looking at seventh or eighth place. In fact, you know, San Antonio is just behind Dallas. So we could be realistically in seventh or eighth place or ninth mm-hmm. right there for you as low as ninth going into the time when AD and LeBron comes back. So these are some nervous times, my friend. These are some nervous times. Kind of like the Bruins going up against Gonzaga. <laughs> uh, that's not even brother. You saw the way they destroyed my my USC team. I mean, they that was something I knew was going to happen. But that's a freight train. They look so good, and mm-hmm. even with USC with all the prospects that they have for the NBA on their roster. And if you get a chance, please check out our, my thoughts on that on the late night Lakers fast break we did, and that was a great show. And I cannot thank enough Jamie Sweet for being a part of it and for everybody staying up late to watch it. But, uh, you know, you saw the, all the players that were there that are going to probably play in the NBA, and that didn't matter to Gonzaga. They were just a freight train running. And if UCLA meets up against Gonzaga, there's no chance, man. There's absolutely zero chance. There's always you, a chance, man. There's always a chance. Unless Suggs gets hurt, there's no chance. They are just they a said the same train. thing. They said the same thing about Alabama. They said no, the I same didn't. thing about Michigan. I didn't. Everybody else did. Okay, it's Gonzaga, then everybody else. That team mm-hmm. is just a monster. They Defensively, they you work still gotta, together. You still got to make shots. You still got to come out and play. You still have the game. This game is still going to be decided on the court, not in the minds of all of the people who think Gonzaga is unbeatable. Uh, Gonzaga is on the people. I'm one of those people. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, but UCLA is not playing Gonzaga next game. Yes, they are. Are they? Saturday. Oh, okay. Saturday. So they are. Okay. So they are lining up against you. underdogs. Oh, that's the all? biggest underdogs in the final four in history. Which that should sounds, be it. At least I heard that, but that doesn't, I mean, compared to the, some of the UCLA teams back when, I can't even believe that's true. I can't believe that's true either because it should be a lot more, to be honest with you. I, I would favor Gonzaga by 18, maybe hmm. more. But You want to put some money on that for the 18? <laughs> I might take but, that. Uh, not my, no, not mine. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I, if I'm going to bet, I'm going to bet here in Vegas since I'm right near the books. That's where I know I get a nice return. We're signaling the ref for a quick timeout, but we'll be back with more of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Check out what's been going on with the Pop Culture Cosmo Show and the PCC Multiverse. That is by far my favorite 
because it's all so character driven and the stakes are high and there's much more of a mystery and intrigue to it. A game like Wolfenstein, which people are saying are one of the most socially important video games of the past 10 years. Catch our shows on radio worldwide seven days a week or at any time on Podbean, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or on over 30 more podcast outlets. So I'll tell you what, it is going to be Gonzaga and UCLA this weekend, but also on Friday, it is Sacramento at Sacramento. And then after that, in a Sunday afternoon marquee game, ABC, I know it's also going to be the NBA radio game of the week from what I'm seeing or the on the ads. It's going to be against the Clippers. One last thing before we head on out, Tom, and before we talk about what you're writing about at Lakerholics.com, Boogie Cousins is going to the Clippers. Your final thoughts on that? Mm-hmm. I hated to see that, you know. I'm a big Boogie fan. Uh, in fact, uh, at various points, I was supportive of of signing Boogie instead of uh, instead yes, of you were. Yes, simply you were. because he's a he can be a volume three point shooter that can stretch the floor, and he's still a big body, just like Mark was. Mark, Mark made a couple of good plays defensively tonight. I didn't want him to go to the Celtics, but then to find out that he wasn't going to the Celtics because he was. He had decided to go to the Clippers. Makes it tougher on the Lakers. Um, I think Boogie still has something to go. He's only 30 years old. Um, and I, you know, I had hoped that uh, that he'd end up with the Lakers. We'll have to see what happens with that last roster spot and if we can find a three and D player. Um, and, you know, and I'm still not completely, I'm still not completely thinking that, Drummond is not going to help a lot in certain situations. We'll see how he does against the Kings, assuming that he plays. Um, you know, it's uh, this was such a tough matchup for him because he's just he cannot physically compete against Giannis, and his sort of lack of ability to finish at the rim just gets highlighted when you've got a great shot blocker and a, and a superior athlete like Giannis defending you. Um, so we'll see what happens. You know, hopefully, you know, I'm still going to root on Friday on Friday for the Lakers to come back and have a great game. And uh, we'll see what happens. And uh, But we have to win those games. These are the games that we have to win, the winnable games. I don't expect us to defeat the Bucks. even my predictions. Of, of, I thought that, I thought that uh, Dre would have a much better game, but I thought we'd still lose the game. I definitely don't think we're going to beat the Clippers. Um, although they're a little bit of a Jekyll and Hyde type of team, so you never know. But the games like against the Kings and uh, and teams like that, those are the games that we have to win now if we want to avoid being in an untenable situation where we're going to be in a play-in tournament. If you thought it was embarrassing that the Clippers fell in the second round to the to the Nuggets, well, the Lakers get knocked out in the play-in tournament because somebody got red hot and two or three guys had a couple of career games would be an even worse disaster for the purple and gold. So I want to avoid that playing tournament if it's all possible. We'll have to see when LeBron comes back, when AD comes back. But one thing for sure is we can't be losing to teams like the Kings or we're going to be there for sure. Once again, it's Laker Tom. Please go ahead, give him a shout out at Laker Tom on Twitter. We're at Lakers Fast Break on Twitter. Lakers Fast Break at Yahoo.com. And of course, our page is Lakers Fast Break on Facebook and Lakerholics on Yahoo as well. I'm not Yahoo, but Lakerholics Facebook group. You join that Facebook group today. What are you working on on an article for Lakerholics.com? I'm still hanging on to the trade season, even though the trade deadline has gone by, because I, I just see what's happening with the roster and the situations that we are in, uh, the Dennis Schroeder situation and so forth. So I'm in the middle of an article that uh, basically says it's time for the Lakers to do something about their rent-a-center strategy because the last two years we have really not had the right kind of center and there's a certain aspect of me that feels like maybe Anthony Davis doesn't really want to play any center, especially with the current injury that he's got and the injuries that he's had in the past. He played 25% of center, 20, more than 25% of his minutes at center last year and 60% of his minutes at center in the playoffs. So far in this regular season, he's played 8% of his time at center. 
and I think the Lakers were hoping that with Drummond that he might not have to play in a lot of center in the playoffs. So I think that it, that once we get to the off season, I think the biggest priority, even more than replacing Dennis Schroeder in the point guard, is to stop the rent a center situation that we're in and find a permanent back a fir- permanent front court mate for for Anthony Davis that can grow with him and and really solidify the front court of the Lakers, especially uh, as LeBron gets older. Well, we'll see what happens. Hopefully that will be done on the off season. Rob Palenka will get that taken care of. Hopefully. I mean, that was supposed to have been taken care of this past off season, but apparently that's not the case. Yeah. We didn't take care of that. And we didn't take care of the three point shooting either. No, no, we didn't. Indeed, or the, but... or the wing defender. <laughs> no, no. But then again, somebody kind of warned you that it wasn't all what it seemed to appear during the course of the season, and that chasm wasn't as great as I thought it was. And Well, Marcus know, All may be our best center right now, if you based it on just this game. Yeah, if you based it on this, this game. But we'll see what happens Friday night against Sacramento. We're going to give it another shot with Andre Drummond. Hopefully, he won't get any more toes hurt or injured, and he can see an actual full performance from him. But it is Laker Tom. It is myself, Gerald Glassford. Once again, thank you for everyone for watching. Salama to everyone in the Philippines that caught us today. Albert, thank you so much again for the thumbs up. We truly appreciate it. We wish everyone all the best. Continued safety to everyone out there and continued health. Please check out all the great podcasts that are available on the Hoop Heads Podcast Network. Of course, be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. And we will be back Friday night after the Sacramento game because we're at Sacramento. So keep your eyes on that, Laker fans. We'll be after the game right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.